did these apples come from? They're all from our trees, right? From our trees, except one bucket we got from a tree up the road at the neighbors. Right. And those were what kind of apples? She told you those were Macintoshes. Yes. So we have a mixture of Granny Smith, um, Brayburn, Golden Delicious. What were the other kinds on the five in one tree, or do we get any from that? Just Golden Delicious off that tree and some Granny Smiths. And then Macintoshes from the neighbor. You haven't even put the Macintoshes in this place. No, not yet. I'm going to. You have to clean cleaned apples, which is what we've done in this big giant bucket full of water. Did you put bleach in it too? I put a drop of bleach in there. A drop. And that gets off all of the like fungus and stuff that grows. Droppings. Stuff like that that might have germs in it. Bird droppings and stuff, right. So even though they were grown organically, they still get contaminants from like the trees are next to the road in our neighborhood. So we get the salt and sand and all of that in the winter and in the summer, just fumes from cars and people driving by, any, any dust that gets stirred up. So all of that needs to be cleaned off before you can start the process of what you're doing now, which is breaking the apples down into little bits. And then once we've gotten the, what do you call that, the press, once that's full, yep. then we put the round lid on top. Yeah, it's a cider mill and press. A mill and a press, yeah. And, uh, I gotta line that up with the... Probably spray a little more WD-40. I didn't get it all the way down there. It's right there. Just a very light spray. Good. Beautiful. So as you twist the, it pushes the plate down on the apples once they've been ground in, in tiny pieces. And then it pushes all the juice out and it flows through the bottom. There's a hole in the tray that the apples sit in. And then we put a filter over the bucket. A screen, a right. Chunks, right. Right. It might fall in there. It's beautiful. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. So how much does one press like this normally make? Like a half gallon? Maybe a gallon. A gallon? Maybe. Maybe less than a gallon. One of these out there. Sure. One out. So now comes the fun part of pouring the liquid gold <laughs> into the jugs. <laughs> We're gonna, yeah, take that mash to the chickens. They'll love it. See how the chickens like the mash from the apples. Oh, we put it in their water. <laughs> Here they come. Yep. Go get the good stuff, girls. I know. <laughs> Yay! Apple mash. That's the good stuff. Don't waste anything on the homestead. Everybody gets something.
other set of hands, we'd have somebody else start cranking out the next, <laughs> batch. The next batch. Keep it going like a conveyor belt factory. Because there's only so much daylight in November. It's going to be almost a gallon. Not quite a gallon. About a pint short of a gallon. So explain exactly what apple water is now that we've done a second pressing and have two gallons of cider now. Just run some, add some water and re-squeeze the mash and you get a, a light refreshing beverage. And you call that apple water? Yep, instead of being pure apple juice it's, it's diluted. Right. It's a delightful drink for children. <laughs> And it's a good way to get a second uh, use out of the apple mash once you've gotten most of the... It's like flavoring your water, yeah. basically. Flavored water. Flavored water. Not the pure juice of the like the cider is. So how much do you think you'll get? Probably a gallon. A gallon. Cool. And we'll show the difference between the color of the apple water and the color of the cider. So we got three gallons of cider and one gallon of apple water. So far, we still have that bucket that we wash them in and all of these buckets left to do. So tomorrow, I guess, we'll get to do some